Hello everyone, my name is Ariella Wagner. I'm the founder of Sunray Construction Solutions, a national construction document service. We help subcontractors and suppliers throughout the United States secure their lien and bond claim rights. Today, we have a fabulous webinar conducted by Alex Barthet. The topic is, how much credit can I extend to my customer before I get screwed? So without further ado, I introduce Alex Barthet. Thanks, Ariella. This is Alex Barthet. I am a board-certified construction attorney here in Florida. And today we're going to answer the question, how much credit can you extend to your customer before you get screwed? Let's get started. So on today's agenda, we will go through several important points. One, the reasons to extend credit. Two, ways to check a person's credit. Three, how much credit you should extend. Uh, four, how to spot problems before they arise, and then what are some of the things you can do to prevent those problems. As always, we will answer any questions you have at the very end of the webinar. Um, just make sure that you submit your questions through the GoToWebinar chat box and not include any names of people or companies in your questions. So. Let's get started. Why do you want to extend credit to your customer? Well, obviously, customer loyalty is an important component of that. Um, you know, customers like it when you give them credit. If you have the financial wherewithal uh, to do it, that's another reason that you can extend credit. Um, obviously, it depends not on only your financial ability to extend credit, but your customer's ability to repay that debt. And that's what we'll talk about a little bit later. In your industry, it may be the standard. You may have to extend credit in order to get customers, meaning everyone assumes that in order to buy products or services from you, that is going to be done on credit. And if so, in order to uh, extend the credit, in order to extend the credit, uh, in order to get the business, you need to extend the credit. And obviously, it gives you a competitive advantage. If you extend credit while other people don't, or you extend more credit than other people do, you can uh, gain more sales that way. Uh, finally, increased sales. Uh, you can sell more if you don't ask for people's money right away. You can ask for uh, only a little bit of the money. Uh, and the rest over time, and you will likely sell more. That obviously comes with risk. So let's talk about ways that you can you can check someone's credit. So the first thing you need to do is have a credit application. Um, this credit application will be a written agreement with terms and conditions. Um, what are some of the things it'll have in it? It'll list the business name, and this is not just their name as they go by or their fictitious name, but actually their business name, that which you can look up on the Secretary of State website. So it should end in Inc. or LLC or something like that. Their address, their tax ID number, if they have a license, their license number. You wanna ask for bank and business credit references. I would say three or four um, references are important. Um, and one thing that we see some clients do, uh, is get all of this information and then do nothing with it. So you actually have to verify this information uh, in order to check someone's credit. You should call and verify people's business credit references as well. You may be surprised to hear that things may not be as rosy as you are hoping or that the customer portrays. You need to get the customer's written authorization to pull their background information um, and credit. That's usually a sentence or two in the credit application that they sign. So where are some places you can check credit? Well, Dun & Bradstreet's probably the single biggest and, well, and most well-known service to check. Uh, so you can set up an account there and check people's credit. Uh, there are other services as well. TLO, which is now part of TransUnion. Uh, Corterra is another one. Uh, but there are things you can do on your own without paying a service. The services 
uh, do a good job of speeding up the process and compiling lots of information for you, but there are ways to do it on your own. So you should check with the Secretary of State to see that the business is in effect, it's still in good standing, verify the time that the business has been in business. Um, maybe it was just started a month before they came and applied for credit. That's a very different situation than a business that's been around for 20 years. The Secretary of State website will give you that information. So you wanna check the public record. So here are some public record searches that you can do. Um, so depending on the county that you're in, you wanna search the county record recorded documents for that uh, customer. So you'll Google, so let's say it's Marion County. So you'll Google Marion County recorded documents and it'll take you to the recorded document section um, page for the that county and you can type in the customer's name and it'll tell you what uh, information is there. Maybe there are recorded judgments, recorded liens, deeds of pieces of property owned by that customer. Those are the things you want to find. Um, you also want to see if they own currently own any property. So again, you'll Google the name of the county and then county property appraiser. So if you type in Miami-Dade County property appraiser, it'll take you to the property appraiser's website in Miami-Dade County. You type in the name and it'll tell you any property that that person or entity currently owns. Um, if you want to see if they have any pending court cases in state court, uh, you can type in, uh, let's say, Sarasota County Court Records, and it'll take you to the Sarasota County Public Records Division, and you can search for any open or closed civil and criminal cases. That, again, is a good piece of information to know before you extend credit to somebody. Maybe they haven't told you about a big case where they're being sued. You do this search, you find out that they're a named defendant in a multi-million dollar case, you may reconsider uh, the amount of credit you decide to extend. And then uh, here's some other things you should do uh, as well. Uh, good old Google, just search in Google with their name or variations of their name and look for online reviews. Maybe the company you're going to extend credit to has horrible reviews online and you may reconsider the amount of credit you give because if you sell product to a company who is poorly rated online, they may have a hard time collecting from their customers and therefore they'll have a hard time paying you. Uh, see if there are any complaints on the company's license. Uh, mug shots are a big deal. Maybe the principals of the company that is asking you to extend credit, um, maybe they have criminal convictions. That may come up online as well. Uh, any bankruptcies may show up, other related companies, as well as their website to see what their website says about them and their business. So now you've gotten a credit application, you've gotten the authorization to pull credit, you've run all the searches in the various counties and Google and Dun and Bradstreet, and now the question is, how much credit should you extend to this customer? Well, the first thing to understand is that it's not an exact science. There's no easy formula that people use to determine how much credit you should extend. Um, so the first question you have to ask is how much are you willing to put at risk based on what you've seen in the credit search? The next thing you wanna know is, is the debt secured? Are you gonna have a UCC? Are you gonna use Sunray to secure your lien and bond rights, uh, therefore increasing the likelihood of getting paid? Are you gonna have a personal guarantee? Um, also increasing the likelihood that you're gonna get paid? Whatever decision you make with respect to how much credit to extend, I strongly encourage you to start slowly, just like a credit card would when they give their first credit card to somebody. Start with a lower amount and extend that credit over time with a history of on-time payments. Um, and every job that you extend credit on can be different because it may depend on the lien and bond rights you have, whether or not you have a guarantee, 
Um, but generally speaking, we see most uh, supply houses extend credit in the very low thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars to new customers um, that are relatively new to the business. Um, and they move upward from there. Uh, so how to spot problems once you've extended credit. So you've decided to extend credit um, and now you are a little nervous. So what are some of the signs that there may be a problem with the credit you extended? Uh, one, a pattern of late payments. If you have a history of consistent late payments, that obviously is a red flag. A different buying schedule. Um, you know, maybe they're buying different things than you would normally have expected. We have a client who uh, was selling uh, mostly pipe to a customer, uh, and then uh, out of nowhere, the customer decided to buy uh, 15 concrete saws, not something they had ever bought before, a uh, very unusual um, order for this customer. Um, they were purchased on credit, uh, and then the customer never paid the bill. And we have come to suspect that the customer uh, has gone out of business and he bought the concrete saws to pawn them uh, and generate cash. So again, a very unusual order, uh, very different from what was purchased before. You know, this is not all too different than your credit card company. You know, if they suspect fraud, they'll put a hold on your card and they'll want you to talk to them because they have, uh, you know, some type of algorithm that has determined that whatever that purchase was is out of the ordinary for you. You should keep an eye on that for your own customers. Um, are they selling assets? Are you hearing that they're moving offices, they're selling trucks, um, those types of things are very concerning. Significant changes in personnel are also sometimes a uh, indication of problems in the business. Um, multiple locations with some locations closing uh, and not moving, also another sign of a problem. Um, and anytime someone asks for additional credit, um, you should be concerned because they may be asking for more credit beyond what they should be getting. So when someone asks for additional credit, you should rerun their credit, which actually leads to ways that you can prevent problems. Um, you need to rerun people's credit ideally every year. Um, we see clients sometimes extend credit and then never check credit again. Um, you should have a process in your office that credit gets checked every year for everybody. Um, it may not be as thorough of a check as you've done in the past when you, uh, when you extended credit to begin with, but you should still check credit. You may learn things that will at least cause you to maybe have a conversation with the client to understand a situation that may be revealed in the credit report that you did not know about. Uh, check on the job and the status of your equipment. How often are you going out to see that materials are delivered to the job, they're getting installed on the job, if you're a rental company, that your rental equipment is at the job where it's uh, said it was? Um, those things are important. Meeting with the client and listening to them as they tell you about their business. Um, are they telling you about concerns that they have, uh, jobs that they thought they were going to win and didn't get? Um, those types of things you should be aware of. Um, our most successful clients with credit managers are, uh, those credit managers are visiting with clients uh, and talking to them and, uh, and trying to understand their business better so that the amount uh, of credit that they give matches both what the customer needs and also minimizes the risk um, to the business. Talk to your sales team. Um, you know, you at, in the, at the executive level or in the credit department 
Um, you may not interact with the people uh, on in the field or in the your customer's business the same way that your sales team does. So talk to your sales team. What are they saying about what's happening uh, at the business? Keeping good records is absolutely critical. If there is a situation that occurs in the future, the accuracy and completeness of your records is going to make a huge difference in how well you can recover if you have to file a lien um, or file a lawsuit to recover money that you're owed. Um, and finally, stay updated on changes in the law. Uh, for example, if you are uh, doing your own liens and bond claims, which frankly, I suggest that you don't do, you should use a service, Sunray, to go ahead and record your liens and prepare those notices. Um, if you do it on your own and you don't keep your ear to the ground, you wouldn't have learned that last year, for example, there was a material change in the notice statute with respect to bond claims. And if you're not up to date on those changes and you use old forms uh, with improper notices, you will lose your rights to get paid and it will significantly impact your business. So stay updated on changes in the law to make sure that you are in full compliance with your obligations to secure your debt. And with that, Ariella, we are done. Does anybody have any questions uh, that has that that have been submitted? No, we do not have any questions. You just you did a sensational job. But if anyone does have any questions, you could certainly reach out to us at any time. And here are our, the our contact information. It's coming. Okay. There we go. Beautiful. Well, and Alex, before we yes. before we go, Ariella, uh, let's mention our next seminar and webinar. Our next seminar is on February 18th from 8 to 11 in Miami. And we do these webinars every month for free from 9 to 9.20. The next seminar is don't sign a release unless it says this one thing. Seriously, don't do it. We're going to talk about some release pitfalls um, so that you don't give up more rights than you intend um, that's on February 20th. And you can sign up for all of these seminars and webinars at sunraynotice.com forward slash education. Well, you did a wonderful job as always, Alex, and I wish everyone a sunny day. Thanks. Have a great day, everybody.